Hey, what's up, Just Top Media TV coming to y'all once again. Make sure y'all don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. So we're going to speak on Lil Doc, you know, um, who was just indicted by the feds for two murders and extortion, allegedly. You know, his court transcripts was actually interesting enough. You know, it says that he was actually arrested and that they used some evidence as an interview he had did in 2019, y'all. You know, Lil Doc from the East Coast, Crips, who was very influential for being, you know, one of the dudes who was responsible for the peace treaty with the Florencia 13s, which right after he was indicted by the feds, FBI, for, you know, two murders, allegedly an extortion, you know, of a marijuana dispensary, allegedly and um, being labeled as a leader of the 6-9 East, East Coast Crips. You know, this the FBI transcripts of Lil Doc Thong's case, who's known as Paul Gary Wallace, Paul Gary Wallace, aka Lil Doc Thong, Steel Bill, Uncle Bill. So we're going to go straight down to the, you know, what they actually are accusing Lil Doc of doing. So we're going to go right to the first murder where 2003, on or about. So this is act number Act number five, on or about February 2003, within East Coast Crip territory, defendant Wallace, aka Lil Doc, using a handgun, shot and murdered RP, an East Coast Crip gang member who publicly disrespected Lil Doc. So the first murder was allegedly committed by Lil Doc against some against his home his own homeboy from the same hood who had disrespected him publicly. Which led to him getting killed allegedly by Lil Doc. This is what the indictment, the transcript goes on to say. Now I see a whole bunch of other situations that they're trying to charge him with. For carrying guns and carrying controlled substances or whatever. The second murder in question that they have him for. And you know this is a confidential witness who is actually... Helping the authorities, but um, the second murder was on or about November 13, 2014. Defendant Wallace Lil Doc drove a co-conspirator to RB's residence. So him and his co D drove to a gang member named RB, not RP, which was the first victim's name. But this is the second victim by the name of RB, which happened 2014, 11 years after the first murder. And so... They drove to his house within gang rival territory in a Cadillac Escalade and provided his code D with a caliber AK M47 assault rifle, which his code D then used to murder RB. So by this time, an informant, whoever it is, whether it's his code D or somebody else, was giving information to the feds on Lil Doc. So they kept tabs on him. I know y'all see. You know, there's a lot of acts, you know, in this transcript. And I think Lil Doc kind of felt that the walls was closing in once he realized in a phone call in 2016, on or about 2016, December 15, Lil Doc told his co-conspirator, cuz I'm so hot, man, cuz I was out there from 1st Street to 109, 190. Those dudes, man, out the way of me. Cuz, a reference to defendants Wallace's position of power and influence within the East Coast Crips and over 10 East Coast Crips sets, including the six pack. That's what it goes on to say regarding a situation where Lil Doc felt like the FBI was following him. On or, in another situation, on or, about, on or about December 28, 2016, defendant Lil Doc told his code D. That any dude get at me like that up in here or out there, dude, I'm going to burn him up with a knife up in here in the jail. And on the outside, I'm going to burn him up with bullets. That's the real. That's what Lil Doc said allegedly in a phone call to his code D in the county jail using coded language. Or it could have been a letter. Most shocking of them all was in this situation where the indictment goes on to say 
that Lil Dark had did an interview on YouTube with a platform. I'm not sure if it was with Street TV or Kev Mac or somebody. But it goes on to say that act number 26 on or about November 2019. In an interview about East Coast Crip, defending Lil Dark stated, I'm killing. I'm going to hell. He said you should not kill. I didn't kill. I didn't kill the few. Motherfucker, so I know I'm going to hell. And in referring to a rival gang member, said he was killing like a crazy dude like me. And I'm like, damn, they put in work. They got murders under their belt just like me. I got murders under my belt. So they're saying that, so this is quote unquote Lil Doc. They're using these quotes from a Lil Doc interview, you know, on YouTube allegedly, that, you know, this was what he was saying and how. He was incriminating himself on this interview along with the two murders they had on him, allegedly, and that they're using his interview on YouTube. It doesn't mention which platform's name, but they are quoting these particular words. So, um, but uh, let me know what y'all think y'all about the situation about Lil Doc. You know what I mean? Do y'all think they targeting him for being positive, changing his life around, or do y'all think, you know, what they saying is true? You know, I'm going to post... The full paperwork in a description so y'all can read it for yourselves. But make sure y'all don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace, y'all.